have a confession to make. We never liked Halloween. It goes against the Polish values and traditions. One year, my boyfriend dumped me on Halloween. Another year, we had a relative die on Halloween. It's just too cold to go outside and have fun. And dressing up as monsters? Who does that? We're too Christian for that. Hell win. It's not youngies. <laughs> but you know who loves Halloween? It's us. <laughs> Dark Tentarium is back. Did she miss us? My name is Barbara, the Sim Weeper. And my name is Alexandra, the painter of souls. And we're Dark Chantarium. This year's Halloween collab we're going to make Lady Devimon from Digimon Adventure. We are not continuing our Winx Halloween series. And we're not even sorry about it, because we are the dark <coughs> alter egos. I think Alex and Barb actually care about doing this series, but we're not. Deal with it. So, let's begin. As a base, we're going to use one of these Ray Smart dolls, but with some unique additions. Let's 3D model some body parts in Blender. Just like our Digimami Rosemon, she's going to have a custom head with a signature mask. The problem with me and 3D modeling is that I usually have to repeat the model three times before it looks good. So I had this first weird looking version. Then I tried to save it by adding some depth here and there, but neither of us liked it, so I started from the beginning. The base of the head is from Smart Doll side, so I have good measurements and a neck hole from the start. I added much more details than on the previous attempts, like sculpted eyelids and more chaotic stitches. Before it was heavily influenced by still drawings and low poly models I found on the internet. But this time I tried to apply Lady Devimon's features on smart doll proportions and it turned out to be the best solution because she looks 10 times better. But the adventure with this head doesn't stop here. I sent it over to Barb so she could print it for me. You can't really see in the time lapse, but some of the supports failed and the chin on the first print got squished. We ran the print again, but that time, for some reason, we ran out of resin, so the top of the head didn't print. Fuck. Attempt number three. Third time, the charm, right? Seems like it worked. You, you can't see it, but I can. Na, 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 na. You can see better again. Looking good. She's indeed looking good. Amazing even, if I do say so myself. The back has a few visible layers, but it looks like a few fabric folds, so I'm not mad about it. Let's finally start the real customizing and paint her face. I'm covering everything with light grey and then adding black and dark grey to the mask and this thing around her face. Off camera I added some textures by blending colors while the paint is wet or by dry brushing. I also added a few small details like cracks or highlights on the stitched parts. I want to add something that looks like makeup, but it's not really a makeup to the area around the eyes. I actually don't know if they are real eyes or just a part of a mask, but we can't skip the makeup. I'm adding some shadows and creases and then adding some sort of cut crease eyeshadow in light grey. I can't leave the eyes like this, we need that 2010s combo of grayscale and red like on edgy rose pictures. <laughs> and when that's done, I finally remember that she has a mouth. I sculpted tiny fangs that are barely visible in real life, so I had to enhance them with grey paint. And for the lips, I chose a blend of red, pink and black pastels. I absolutely love her, she's edgy, she's sexy, she's evil, so basically perfect. Time for the outfit, which is a bit complicated. Step one is to protect the doll. I did a stain test. And this is like, I rubbed it like three times. This one will be whole. This one I need to cut off around here. I guess we'll just sort of eyeball what looks nice. Then this has mouth over the knee. So we'll do that. And the outer is gonna have a little bit more detail. If we could just slide it on. My problem is that I don't think it will slide over the butt because this Lycra is... no. You ran time. I bought a really good by stretch Lycra. It was white and very thin. And it's not this Lycra, but I ordered it from them and I only ordered half a meter because I was like, if I'm gonna test it, I need to order less. And then I wanted to reorder it because it was so nice. And um, I ordered two meters because I was like, you know what? It's such a good Lycra. I'll just order two meters because I'm gonna use it so much for lining things. And I did order it and they sent me the wrong Lycra. And I was like, hey guys, so I think you sent me the wrong thing because I ordered this before and it's not like the one I ordered before. And they were like, yeah, we changed suppliers and it's a different Lycra now. So enjoy your two meters of shitty Lycra now. Bitch. <laughs> they didn't say bitch, but 
Ok, so with the white suit made as a trial, I can now cut the real deal out of this matte black lame, I guess, or lame. Should I say just lame? Which has a similar stretch to the white lycra, so it's not bad, at least the pattern should work the same. While cutting, I realized the fabric was gonna stain worse than I thought. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but just from cutting this, my nails got purple, so I think I might actually wash the fabric one more time. Because this is scary. This is the color of the water. With the fabric at least a bit pre-washed, I pieced the front together and added these big decorative stitches Lady Devimon has all over her outfit. I made them with a few strands of black thread, which I'll admit, because of the matte finish on the fabric, is not the most visible right now. Because no one makes a sewing pattern specifically for a Lady Devimon costume for a smart doll, and neither am I in this process, I worked down just from a bodysuit pattern and sort of played with it, adding parts and cutting bits and so on. With the main black shell put together, I put it onto the white suit to check where I should add the next features. There is a few faces on the costume in a few places and one of them is on the knee, so I marked where I should cut the leg so I can insert some fabric below for the mouth to get a 3D effect. After cutting an already sewn thing, I always make sure to tack down near the cut so that the seams don't start to unravel. Then I cut out the eyes out of the fabric and decided to put some red lycra below. Now, do I think that stitching this is gonna look better or do I think that gluing this is gonna look better? I worry about to glue being, you know, like all around here and then letting go of the glue. So I'm not sure, but it looks spooky. I think the fact that the costume has such a DIY vibe is on my side. <laughs> I ended up liking the hand sewn effect, which means I will have to do a bunch of hand stitching later, but the torn and repaired vibe calls for it, so I should have known what I was getting into. I did use some glue just to have that two-factor verification, and I added a slightly less matte lame or lame for the knee part, which unfortunately after stretching didn't have that shiny effect anymore. It was nice having the white suit under so I could hold stuff down with pins. Ale fajny jest ten projekt. Mogę sobie tak po prostu ucinać rzeczy i tak i jakby. E, to jest design choice. E, on taki ma być pognieciony. Tutaj też ma być takie pogniecione, no. Nie wyszło? Nie, tak miało być, pogniecione. Now that I convince myself that it's all good, I'm gonna sort out the back. The easiest way to do it is a corset back and I think I'm having flashbacks to our Rosamond episode where I also tried to convince myself that I want to add tiny loops in the back. I marked out even spaces with my Epic Custom Holographic Sewing Ruler TM, but promptly came to my senses and decided against it. I instead thought I would do what Rosamond has and I'll just thread something in a crisscross at the back and I even busted out this huge ass needle to do it, but it was not pulling through the fabric so I did the next reasonable thing and installed rivets in the back. Drop metal properly. <sighs> I hate doing things properly. <laughs> I added a nice little top stitch along the edge to keep the layers in place and then punched out a bunch of holes which I think I should have interfaced because some of the rivets are shifting especially in the spots where the fabric needs to be pulled together really tightly but whatever it works. Yeah I know you can see your ass but it's loose on purpose so I can get into the stand port and you're not gonna be looking at the back anyway and there's gonna be like hair and wings and a million other things so I promise you're not gonna see that. We're in a really good spot with most of the bottom of the outfit done. It's been a really fun process so far uh, especially after our little break earlier this month. I don't know if you can tell, but I think I'll have to wash the mat after the black fabric because <laughs> it's getting like dirty and ugly. But I've cleared my desk. My sister will yell at me if I don't do that every now and again and be like, Hey, your desk is such a mess and you're recording on it and you can see anything. Well, there. You happy? She was in fact not happy, but with the lack of visibility of the stitches on the suit. So I removed the black stitching and replaced it with grey. It's hard to say what the original colorway of the character is, but I think what we did is reverse, where the stitching is lighter than the fabric. Some Digimon defenders will probably throw some hateful comments at us for it, but I like the way it looks. Let's focus on the bottom of the outfit with the shoes. Last time I made these, I had the issue of warbler sticking to my plastic lasts, so I had this great idea of covering them up with PTFE tape, which should not be as sticky. It's also not sticky to itself though, so it was hard to tape up. And I'm making a mummy. I mean, 
We're making a digi mummy. With the last taped, I wore two sets of gloves, one for the heat and the nitrile for the sticking, and I made a warbler base for the shoes. The glove situation was not really working out though. After heating and shaping, I tried to take off the warbler and see if my idea was really as brilliant as I thought. So the bad news is that the PTFE tape sticks to warbler, and there's no good news. <laughs> my idea was dumb. I mean, it worked kinda, cause it got detached. And it does have the shape of the last sort of, you know? Even though the Werbla was sticking a bit, I managed to make a pair of workable bases. Lady Devimon has two different shoes and one of them has a rounder tip. I entertained the idea of making a new shoe shape for my collection, but we decided against it for a couple of reasons, so I'm trying to bulk up one of the pointy shoes with some Werbla scraps. I'm not sure that did anything visually, but hey, I tried, okay? I enclosed the Werbla bases with an insole from the bottom and trimmed them up a bit to be able to stick the feet into the shoes. And now we can move on to stretching some fabric over these. I already prepared some fabric tubes that I could slip onto the leg, followed by the base and then stretch them over so I could add the little evil faces to them. Now I need to draw the eyes and the stitching. It'll be similar to how I did the, the knee, so I'll spare you the details, my friends. Yup, did that the exact same. It's Spider-Man! Maybe more like Venom? Working on such a big doll on my tiny desk means that I had to dangle her leg over the edge to do this, on my lap basically. You get the point. I stitched it up and I added the teeth. I did the second shoe the same and then pulled the fabric on the underside with some thread to secure it over the warbler bases and I fit them with the soles but I had to reprint them with a block your heel. Alex gave them a coat of paint and I was able to glue them in place using a combination of super glue and then uhu glue and hot glue. It's like the three cheeses pizza, you know? <laughs> I think they turned out super cool and I really love the shape of the shoe because it's so feminine and elegant. Let's go on another 3D adventure. I found this low poly Lady Devimon model on Thingiverse and we're going to use it as a base for something more poly. I'm basically transforming the floating ghost into a better resolution model by using some remeshing tricks. But I know that I can do a better job with refining the model by hand. I mean by mouse. It's such a good project for using the 3D space because Digimons are digital monsters, so like, this is their natural habitat. <laughs> I do not like drawing hands or sculpting hands or everything hands, so it took me a few hours to get the right shape. But there he is, looking sharp and around at the same time, just like I envisioned him. At first, we had an idea to print him with a part of the blouse so that we could put it on a vinyl bust. But we quickly realized that it's not going to print and probably will not work like we want. So we went for option two, printing a hard bust and screwing the ghost on the shoulder so it can hold the position. The bust is a modified Smartel model from their website. Let's see if the ghost has printed. Boo! I'm the ghost! <laughs> no, that's the ghost. Yay! That's nice. A quick cleaning and curing and he's ready for a makeover. I love how spiky but soft he is. And also we printed bust. For comparison, normal smart doll bust, medium smooth bust and our version for this project. The only downside is that she will not be able to bend the neck and it means less movement. But hey, the ghost will stay securely in one position and that's what we want. It's time to paint this creepy little face. I'm starting with black vinyl paint and slowly adding lighter paint just to make it darker on the next pass. And then lighter again. I know, I know what I'm doing, okay? I swear, I know. I just want smooth transitions between shades, highlighted edges and some texture on top. He gets the same eye color as the doll and also a lot of lighter lines to create a ghostly vibe. I think he looks like a combination of stone and smoke and I really like this effect. I'm making the holes for screws, but you will not see me attaching the pieces. I will leave screws to the screw expert, Barb. Screw it, Barb. Anyway, time for the part that I would have never designed myself, the big hand. I tried to save the original low poly model to make it better, but it turned out that it would be much easier to make it from scratch. 
I copied the hand and the little ghost though. I like when dolls have a nice, delicate hand pose, even if it's a huge hand with nothing but claws. So I modified the fingers while they were still super low poly. I think I struggled with this hand the most. I had like 7 versions of it. I like the spiky look, so every time I was adding more polygons and trying a softer look, I was like, eh, meh, and started from the beginning. I finally found the compromise between a bit softer top and very spiky fingers. The little ghost was easy, I basically did the same things as on his big brother. I noticed that in both cases they are made from the fabric of Lady Devimon's clothes, so I decided to sculpt some fabric on the sleeve. I always wanted to sculpt some fabric folds and I think for the first time it's pretty nice. After checking if everything is joined together, I can send it to Barb for printing. I'm worried that it might not be printing, so... I'm trying to either catch it early or I don't know what, what I'm gonna do. Sneak in. My dudes. I think that's gonna be lit. I know that you young kids don't say that anymore. <laughs> but I'm old and I think this will work. So I'll check back in six hours. It's turned out epically. It's so tall that it's still in the resin, but it worked! I'm so excited. Now I need to wash it. Painting this arm is going to be very similar to what I did on the ghost and the head, so let's talk about my favorite topic instead, me. When the hand came back to me, the first thing I thought was like, damn, I think I'm actually good at this. I definitely spent too much time on mistakes and figuring out the right workflow and just remembering how the software works because I don't sculpt very often. But when I do, I think good stuff comes out of it. I always feel a little bit insecure about my modeling because I was not the best at it in university I, and I didn't like the classes. And I just didn't have enough passion to search for tricks and techniques. And I think I have a more 2D type of imagination. But this time, I really like how it turned out. And I can say it with confidence, this is, this is good. I like it. I like it. I don't know if you like it, but I think it's really nice. I don't have the same confidence for my previous bigger projects, like 3D sculpted ball jointed doll for my graduation project in 2019, or Tsula's legs, or Coco's arms, but I really, really believe in the power of practice. We've been doing 3D modeling for dolls since the very beginning of our channel. Even our first video, which was dark and ugly and with bad accents and poor editing, it has some 3D printing in it. And I definitely can see the progress we're both making. Anyway, this is how he turned out. I added another face to the palm and... Is it palm? To the hand and some definition to the fabric and bracelets. And look at them together! It's a creepy but happy little family. I love them. I sort of had to wait with making the top for all the stuff to print, so I can now try and figure out how to make it so that one, the boobs are pronounced, sort of similar to the Rosamond costume, two, I don't stain the arms, and three, it connects nicely to the ghost and fits over the torso. So yeah, to make it go in between the boobs, the easiest way is to use glue. So that's why we chose to 3D print the bust. I thought I could just wing it and drape it, but it was not going well and I decided to add the ghost to the bust to get a better idea of how it needs to be cut and all that and I was slowly realizing that I have to start with an actual shirt pattern. This girl sort of has the shape that I need. So yeah, it's time to take that pattern out. With a solid base as a start, I modified the pattern to be less pieces and threw out one of these sleeves. As I laid out the pieces, the plan was getting more and more clear. What I am gonna do is attach the color, which is elongated to the color area, and attach one of the sleeves here. I will add a detail here first, because I think there's some stitching here as well. And I will add some stitching onto this piece. This is the lower middle piece, and I will attach it to this because they sort of get stitched here and then I will, I guess, improvise <laughs> from that point on. I already prepared a cover for the arm to minimize staining as much as possible and with the parts sewn I could try it on. Some parts needed more work. This actually needs to be stitched with this to cover the boobies. And then this gets glued in here. But the whole point is so that I can glue this here so that you can see the outline of the tits. 
because the tits are the important thing here. With my priorities straight, I moved on to figuring out how much to pinch in the back to get that smooth latex-like look. Maybe then I should stitch this together. And now that I know where, stitch this together. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. And that should serve as a reminder that you don't always have to know what you're doing to be having fun. Thank you. Unless you like playing with atomic bombs or something, maybe then you should know what you're doing. Some were cutting and shifting things into place and I was ready to commit to making the boobs the main character of this outfit. A moment of silence for this shot. I spread the glue thin and when it's dry, it's time to press the fabric between the um, melons, I guess. Now, I need to press it in so that it's clear that she has been graced by Mother Nature with huge badonkas. Uhu glue couture. With more uhu glue, I secured the top to the underside of the bust. Since it will lay on top of the lower suit, it should not stain anything. I'm gonna stick it for your love if you're interested into what it's in my headphones right now. Also, by the way, we talk about what we're listening currently to in our Patreon after party, which you can join tomorrow if you're watching this video on release date. So go over to Patreon and you can learn more about the K-pop that I like to listen to. <laughs> By the way, we also talk about our future and past projects, not just K-pop, so if you'd like to support our work, we would love to have you there over at patreon.com slash angentarium, shameless plug over. It's like surgery with oversized tools. I kept on gluing pieces and cutting pieces off to make the top blend into the little ghost and whatnot. And the last part was to add the teeth-like stitching. And I think the ghost is really thinking of a sewing career after this video is over. I think it looks epic. It's missing a skull. Don't mind me, just, you know, touching boobies. I decided to just freehand the skull on some paper, but my first try was a bit too big, so I scaled it down and cut it out of fabric. Mr. Skull is unimpressed, but we're not gonna let that stop us. I just glued it down with some uhu and that was that. As the house engineer, I made sure that the biggest hand will not fall out by strategically using a screw to go through the little hole in the hand peg. I did the same trick on our Coco gauntlets way back. I made sure it was really secure and I tried it on with the suit. Okay, nice. I cannot fit it <laughs> into frame, it's that large. The costume is cute, but I believe it can look even better with some paint on top. I'm using very little amount so it doesn't leak through the lining and so the fabric is still flexible. I added a great gradient to the knee because the difference between our two fabric is not enough for this effect of open mouth. And then I'm defining the shapes, highlighting the edges, brightening the eyes of the monsters and making the pink boot not so happy and innocent looking. I also dry brushed the top and the sleeve, her belly and actually everything. We recently bought a lot of different colors of hair and also some grays specifically for this project. I didn't realize that one of the silver has tinsel in it, so it was a surprise, but I love tinsel hair. I have it in my own hair for over a year now, and if I can use it on a doll, I will. I designed the head with this free space under the mask, so the glue is not visible. Gluing the wefts in this crevice is not the easiest task, especially that the surface is curved and I don't really have space to hold it in place for a moment. But hey, I don't have to do any parting wefts this time. I mixed the silver hair with the tinsel blend and it looks gorgeous. The spark is very subtle and it adds a bit of glam to this very grey look. I glued a few wefts, trimmed the ends, didn't care about the hairstyle, anything actually, and it looks fantastic. I need more projects like this in my life. It was really nice. Maria wanted to help with sketching the right size and shape of the wings slash scarf slash coat. I did a few tries with pencil, then a pen, and lastly I figured out the shape with a marker. So I have no idea how to make it, but we will try. I want this to be as light as possible, but also with the right thickness, posability, and a creepy texture. Then I thought, why not using Hextian's favorite technique of decorating stuff with hot glue? It will blend nicely with the wire and will add something interesting to the design. One of the things I learned in the concept art classes in uni is that when you do a full black character, it's important to use different textures for different parts of the design. This way, it's clear what is what, even if everything is in the same color. 
The wire is still visible, especially on the outer side of the wings, so I covered it with paper mache, a fancy word for a toilet paper with white glue, to soften the look on the edges. It looks much, much better, but I can't leave the wings in one shade. I just need gradients in my life. I want gradient. So I'm dry brushing here and there to enhance the details. And they look like this. To attach them to the doll, I'm using Delightful's favorite material, wooden sticks. I temporarily secured a stick with a wire that was coming out of the wing and I made some holes for the screws in the sticks, the wings and the bust. So it doesn't work like that. Let's try something else. I guess that's just another reason for 3D printing the bust. Just like I told you before, I am not a screwman in this house. Barb did all the screwing off camera and then I added some hot glue for a uniform texture and I painted it black. Alex and I scoured the shops in our area for a chain that will be the right size and long enough but not too heavy. But then we remembered we have a robot army and that you can 3D print chain. I never done it before but I got a ready-made model and it was super easy and I could make as much of it as I needed. Plus the plastic is really light. Alex gave it a messy paint job with a sponge. Since the whole vibe of the doll is a distressed look, it was only fitting that the chain would have some color variation. Lady Devimon has the chain attached in a few spots, but one of them is her thigh, which means that we cannot use glue there. However, magnets exist. It was really easy to drop one into the thigh and have the chain attached by the force of magnetism. <laughs> As easy as that. It was late at night and a bit of a bother to haul the whole doll around for the attachments. So the final result... But it's not the angel. Come on, we have to tease you a bit. One last bit that we haven't addressed in the outfit is the other hand. I am using a default... default? Default? Hand? In cinnamon, because we have two of them. And I will give it a set of long nails. The original design has more of a demonic hand, but we're all about glam here today, I guess. <laughs> I use a tiny bit of acryl gel on a nail form that is squeezed super tight to make basically nail tips in a long stiletto shape in doll scale. I do my own nails, so I'm used to sculpting with a brush. I cure that in a lamp and file it down to shape. I did that five times to get tips for each nail. When I have those, I prep the natural nail by buffing it a bit. And then using super glue, I attached the extensions to the vinyl hand. It was so tiny, I had to use tweezers, and also it was super hard to focus. With the nails on the hand, I gave them a couple coats of UV gel polish. Polish? Oh my god. <laughs> gel polish. A final wipe, and they were done. Later, Alex painted the hand black to match the doll. This is how she turned out. I love the design of this character so much. Wow, that was a very convincing way of saying that. <laughs> I love the design of this character so much. There is a lot of detail that just works together, you know? The chain, the stitching, the wicked faces. It's also cohesive, yet so distressed. I love it. We had to take a bit of a break this month from dolls because I had a big evaluation at my PhD and coming back to a big project like this was so fun and refreshing. This video is of course part of the big annual Halloween collaboration. Make sure to check out videos made by our doll friends, Valkyrie's World, Kairos Workshop, Moonlight Jewel, The Dolly Geek, HLD Crafts, Electric Bunny, I Could Do It DIY, Dollamentary, his name is Akin, Feral Dolls, and Mr. Super Customs. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Something about Patreon here. <laughs> Have an enchanted day, and we'll see you next time. Bye! This video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister tier supporters. We have a new Lost Sister Lee, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Barb from the Future, 
Erin McCoy and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier Patreons, Emerald Havoc, Zibi McAdoo, Emmett Thomas, Yumi Azura, Galina Harcion, Lucky Ducky Lulu, Sirius Eden, Leon Jostings, Mavi, Jeanette, Josephine Falk, Kaylee M, Melissa Novoa, Rinth, Fun of TA, Catherine G, Ashley, Etwell, Hannah Lemon, Ellis Sherbet, Zari, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Bridger, Ghostly Gardens, Brianna Tegan, The Barbie Witch, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Kara Hall, Landy Monk, Jane Beck, Karabu, Sips Party, I already know your names by heart by at this point, Dragon Art Customs, Ninja Star Dizino, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Naughton. Thank you guys, we really appreciate you. We are dunk dark chim yum yum. Dark chanterium. And we're dunk 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 chanterium. Thank memes. <laughs>